The history of Major League Baseball goes back 150 years. There have been over 200,000 games played. That's millions of different plays that have happened, and sometimes they can get pretty weird and unusual. You never really know what you're going to see at a baseball game, and today we're going to talk about some of the rarest things to ever happen in baseball. Hitting a grand slam is a pretty rare play in baseball. It happens in roughly 5% of MLB games, or 1 out of every 20. One player hitting two home runs in one inning is even more rare. Turns for his pitch, and here's a high drive! Deep left center field! Way back and gone! Touch them all, Michael Kadir! Home run number two in the inning! This has happened 56 times in Major League Baseball history. Edwin Encarnacion was the last player to do it in April of 2019. He also did it in 2013. In fact, five players have done it two separate times in the history of baseball. Encarnacion, Alex Rodriguez, Jeff King, Andre Dawson, and Willie McCovey are the only players to do it twice. And two grand slams in a game by one player has happened just 13 times. But what about all of that combined for two grand slams in one inning by the same player? That's only happened once. And on April 23, 1999, Fernando Tatis of the St. Louis Cardinals played against the Los Angeles Dodgers and hit two grand slams in the third inning. What's almost just as amazing by today's baseball is that both grand slams were hit off the same pitcher. Chan Ho Park of the Dodgers was the starting pitcher that game and gave up both slams to Tatis before being removed from the game with two outs in the third. Tatis was able to get up twice by a big rally by the Cardinals as well as a couple errors by the Dodgers. In all, 11 runs were scored in the third inning. Eight of them were runs batted in by Tatis. When a player is left-handed, they generally either play pitcher, outfield, or first base. Left-handers almost never play middle infield or third base in baseball because it's much more efficient for right-handers to do it and less natural for a lefty, especially when it comes to turning double plays when you need to be as fast and efficient as possible. A left-handed player has played second base just four times since 1950 for a total of five innings. Don Mattingly was the last player to do it. Don Mattingly also played third base a couple times in the 1980s and even made a few plays. Shot to third. Holy oh, cow! Does it. Yes, he oh. does. <laughs> the last time something like that happened was when Anthony Rizzo played third base for the Chicago Cubs in 2017. In 1932, Johnny Burnett of Cleveland had nine hits in a ball game. Burnett went nine for 11 in the game against the Philadelphia Athletics that went into 18 innings. Burnett was two for four in the first nine innings of the game, but went seven for seven in extra innings. Burnett ended up being a career 297 hitter in nine seasons in the MLB from 1927 to 1935. That's the only time in Major League Baseball history that a player has got nine hits in one game. In 2016, Brandon Crawford had seven hits in a game that went into 14 innings. That hadn't been done in 41 years. The Giants shortstop went seven for eight in the game and his batting average went from 265 before the game to 278 after. The record for the most hits in a nine inning game is six but that's been done over 40 times. Two times there have been intentional walks with the bases loaded. The first was on May 28, 1998. The Diamondbacks had an eight to six lead over the San Francisco Giants in the bottom of the ninth inning and with the bases loaded and two outs, Barry Bonds came up to bat for the Giants. Bonds was playing in his 7th straight All-Star season as well as his 7th straight 30-plus home run season. 
He was also having a great month of May, hitting 397 with 8 home runs and 26 RBIs on the month, going into the ball game. Barry Bonds was one of the most feared power hitters in baseball, and a home run would win the game for the Giants. Diamondbacks manager Buck Showalter decided to make a bold move and intentionally walk Barry Bonds with the bases loaded. Bonds and everyone in the stadium looked shocked. That would make the game 8-7 to seven Diamondbacks with the bases still loaded. Taking the bat out of Bonds' hands ended up paying off as the next batter, Brent Main, lined out on a full count to end the game. Two pitch. Bonds would end up leading the league in intentional walks that year with 29 and is the all-time leader in intentional walks with 688. This happened again in 2008 when Rays manager Joe Madden decided to intentionally walk Rangers slugger Josh Hamilton with the bases loaded. The Rays had a four-run lead and a grand slam would tie the game. Hamilton was in the middle of his breakout 2008 season when he hit 32 home runs and a league leading 130 RBIs. Wow, this is something. They're walking Hamilton with the bases loaded. Hamilton was hot at the time, so Madden decided to put him on. The strategy paid off that time as well, and the Rays won the ball game. Mark Witten was part of two very rare categories on the same day in September of 1993. At that point in Witten's career, the most home runs he had in a season was 12. But, playing against the Cincinnati Reds, Mark Witten of the St. Louis Cardinals had an amazing 4 home runs at the plate and 12 runs batted in in one game. Hitting 4 home runs in a game has been done just 12 times in Major League Baseball history and having 10 or more RBI in a game has also been done just 12 times. Witten did it both in the same game and also has the major league record for most RBI in a 9 inning game with 12. In March of 2001, Randy Johnson was making a spring training start for the Arizona Diamondbacks against the San Francisco Giants. Calvin Murray was at the plate, who is also the uncle of NFL quarterback Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals. Johnson, the 6 foot 10 hard throwing left hander, through a pitch that ended up being hit by a bird flying by. Johnson would regularly throw fastballs in the upper 90s and even go over 100 miles per hour from time to time. The bird was said to have been a morning dove and unlucky for the bird it didn't fly in front of a pitch from a knuckleballer like Tim Wakefield or it may have survived. But it flew in front of a pitch from Hall of Famer Randy Johnson and when the pitch struck the bird it just about exploded. The odds of this happening are extremely rare. Triple plays are a rare play in baseball, but not the rarest thing. There have been 716 triple plays in the history of baseball and an average of about 5 per season, or about 0.2% chance of a game having a triple play. An unassisted triple play is even more rare an unassisted triple play happens when one player makes all three outs on the same play. There have been 13 unassisted triple plays all time in the MLB. Just two times they happen to end a game. The first was in 1927 when Johnny Nen of the Tigers made one to end the game against the Indians. And the most recent was in August of 2009 when Eric Bruntlett, infielder for the Philadelphia Phillies, turn an unassisted triple play to end the game against the New York Mets. The runners go. Wide drive caught by Brooklyn. He makes the tag. It's a triple play and the ball game is over. The triple play came at the perfect time for the Phillies who were up by two runs with the Mets getting runners on first and second and Mets hitter Jeff Francoeur at the plate. Francoeur hit a line drive up the middle that Bruntlett was able to catch. The runners both happened to be stealing, which made them farther off the bases. When Bruntlett made the catch, all he had to do was step on second base and tag the runner that was a few feet away from him. 
that was able to get the Phillies out of trouble and end the game. It was also one of the most bizarre endings in Major League history. That's all for today's video. Comment your thoughts and if there should be a part 2. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.